DJ Moore, part of the blockbuster trade up for the Carolina Panthers, who are supposedly big braining and might trade the number one overall pick. I don't believe that for like even two seconds. Yeah, man. But part of the, the picks cash they sent to Chicago for the number one overall pick included a player, yeah. which does not happen very often in the NFL, even though it absolutely should. <clears throat> Teams overvalue draft pick lottery tickets more than proven talent. The Bears did not do that. They want to evaluate Justin Fields. They want to just have more talent on the roster. They got it in DJ Moore. And there's a divide on DJ Moore after, what, five years in the league about how good he actually is. I've always maintained he was like a Steph Diggs season waiting to happen because the way he's really good in the short area of the field, but can also do damage deep. Yeah. I know some more of like the true blue tape watchers do not share that assessment. Just what do we think, though, in the fantasy community about DJ Moore linking up with Justin Fields. Yeah, I want to be excited. And I, I did see a lot of a lot of excitement on Twitter. Hey, you know, if DJ Moore finally gets a real quarterback, this and that. But man, there's no denying that DJ Moore is now in one of the, if not the single least fantasy friendly environment possible for a wide receiver. And I say that because last season, and I understand things could change over the offseason and the fact that maybe they, maybe they didn't have pass catchers, so they didn't go in this direction. But let me let me just emphasize for those who forgot uh, somehow how run heavy the Bears were in 2022. Uh, they were under their expected pass rate every single game. OK, one of only two teams to do that. Their highest pass rate over expected in a game pat was negative 5%. That was their highest, okay? They they were regularly, you know, negative 15, negative 20%. Uh, Justin Fields averaged 21 pass attempts per game. He was 28th in dropbacks behind quarterbacks who played 10 and 11 games last year. So in this environment, it is very hard to tell yourself a story where DJ Moore is seeing more than, I don't know, six or seven targets in a game. He's going to have to be super, super efficient. That's that's all. That's what I would I would say here. Now, if the Bears decide, hey, you know what? We have more. We have Chase Claypool and Komet, and Justin Fields is going to take this next step. And he, you know, Justin Fields goes from twenty one pass attempts to twenty eight pass attempts a game. Then we're then we're probably talking okay with DJ Moore. But I think that's a big leap to make with this team. Yeah, I mean, they need to be this year's Eagles, basically, where they greatly they 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 go from being one of the most run heavy teams in the league to far more balanced and occasionally actually pass heavy, yes. like the Eagles were in twenty twenty two. But they also that would require a Jalen Hurts type leap for Justin Fields, and Jalen Hurts was already like a lot more efficient as a passer than Justin Fields was at this point in his career, yeah. and not as big of an arm maybe as Justin Fields, not as breathtaking of an athlete as Justin Fields, but just he had a much higher baseline as a passer already entering like his third year as starter um, where Justin Fields will be doing. And just to, I mean, the really big issue of course is Justin Fields as being a sack magnet. We know part of that of course was his protection issues, which the bears have addressed by signing Mike McGlinchey. Oh no, excuse me. They actually wanted to, he went to the Broncos. Yeah. He went to Denver, <laughs> yeah. So never mind about that. Nope. Uh, my brain is already fried one day in free agency. That's good. That's really, <laughs> real, real good for the rest of the week <laughs> real real good but dj Moore, yet yeah, it comes down to one of two things they either need an eagles type philosophical adjustment on offense yeah. or it needs to be one of those situations where he's the guy who dominates all the air yards has an astronomical target share it's just hard to see that happening with chase claypool who they surrendered a second round pick for darnell mooney who is now actually one of the best of number three receivers in, in the nfl Maybe it's the Bears' number two receiver. Maybe Chase yeah. Claypool will be kind of yeah. like a role-playing number three. But it's actually a fairly talented, at least talented, receiver core now. And it just seems like it's going to be hard to dominate targets to the degree that he needs to mm -hmm. in an offense that even if it does go more pass-heavy, probably isn't going to be actually pass-heavy. And, yeah, it's he's, he's talented, and he's playing mm -hmm. with like a born playmaker. So there is the possibility yeah. – that he goes nuclear. We actually can't discount the possibility that DJ Moore goes nuclear, but it doesn't seem like the most likely outcome. I, you know, I, I will say that DJ Moore has demonstrated uh, an ability over the years, including last year in a, in a just disastrous environment in Carolina to both command air yards and targets last, last year. I, you know, I was doing this off season research for a piece I, I wrote last month uh, for a site. And, um, and DJ Moore uh, had 60% uh, 
of the Panthers air yards over the past two over the over the final two months of the season. 60 percent. OK, no one else had more than 30 percent. Like it, it's, it's just wi- wildly dominant. OK, I, 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 I think that he he can do that. But I think making that jump saying, OK, the Bears are, are on their way to shifting to a more traditional um, uh, you know, balanced offense here. I think that 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 takes that takes quite the quite the jump from from what they were last year. I don't know if I can do it. I will say that if this is the common thinking, if what I'm spelling out here is the common thinking this spring and summer, and people are saying, "No, nah, I'm not. I'm not in on more and more ADP drops to a certain point," then I then I'm in. But I'm not paying a premium for DJ Moore uh, in a in a what should be a terrible fantasy environment for him. Yeah, it's just. He's the guy who had three straight 1,100 yard seasons where just never had a good quarterback that entire time span. It, it did catch up with him last year under 900 yards, even though he's appeared in all 17 games. But he's put a lot of really good things on film. Like you said, we know target commanding is, is a skill, it's not something that just happens. He's always been a target yeah, commander. Yeah. Um, he could go, he's somehow only 25 years old, he turns 26 a month. So it'll be his That's age wild. 26 season. But Man. yeah, he, he's a guy where. It would be so easy to make the negative case all offseason. And it's probably more likely than the positive case, but we can't discount the possibility that he does like erupt. It it is within the range of outcomes. I think yes. I, I, I think that there certainly is that possibility. Uh, but the just to to will DJ Moore to happen in a low volume passing environment uh just seems like the recipe for for heartache. Hey, it's Matthew Barry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Roto World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.